Welcome everyone, Sir Heroescape here today, coming at you with an exciting announcement about the Champion Circle League. Uh, today we're going to be covering all the details of how this last year has gone, um, as well as the finals coming up here. We're going to be running through a bunch of these items fast fire, so hang on to your seatbelts here. Um, we're going to be covering a little bit about the past year and the qualifiers, how that went, the top 16 finishers, the finals event coming up in a month, uh, the format for that, the maps, the prizes and sponsors involved in that, as well as the uh, bracket uh, competition challenge. So um, stick around for that. And there's bookmarks uh, in this video. So if you need to skip around, feel free to do so. For number one, let's go ahead and give a little bit of background and context to the Champion Circle League. Um, as you'll remember, um, back when Avalon Hill was running uh, Age of Annihilation and we had just found out last November that it was not going to be happening and that the, uh, the you know raising of the money had failed, I felt a uh, need and a desire to keep the community excited and involved. Um, you know, there had been a lot of excitement on the site. There had been a lot of involvement on, you know, whether it was Facebook, Heroescapers.com, Reddit, I mean, wherever it was, uh, you know, at tournaments, local tournaments, there was a lot of excitement. And um, and I felt like, you know, there, there needed to be a way to keep things going. Uh, you know, e even if Heroescape never did come back, um, there was still a desire uh, for people to be excited about the game. And so I started preparing the Champion Circle League, which um, has been running for a full year now. We've uh, just uh, completed all of our qualifying events. Um, you'll remember that there's four qualifying events, uh, one every quarter for this past year. Um, and then the top 16 finishers uh, get to be invited to the finals. Now you'll note that the qualifiers, uh, there's two auto bids, the top finisher and the second top finisher of each qualifying event get auto bid into the finals. And then the remaining eight places um, are uh, the next best records in the top 16. Um, and so really, really exciting stuff. We had a lot of participation this last year in each of the qualifiers and uh, some really, really high competition. To give a quick review on each of the qualifiers and giving shout outs to those participants that uh, you know got auto bids. In our first qualifier, um, we had Bodacious Blood, uh, who ran in with the Capuan Gladiators and uh, just took names, man. Went 5-0 on first qualifier, uh, beat out uh, Knight of Light, who came in second um, in that qualifying event, but both uh, became auto bids. In the second qualifying event, we had uh, Og Blaha, who was able to pull out the win on that one. He went 4-0, uh, Food Zing coming in second. Um, also, as a side note, we've had um, in incredible uh, support and uh, involvement from the international community. We've had uh, members from France, from Australia, uh, from all over uh, who have been able to participate internationally, which has been really, really cool to, to see them participate and succeed and do well. Um, I think we had five or six different international folks that have participated in the Champion Circle League, so shout out to them. In the third qualifier, we had a return of the king here. Uh, Bodacious Blood, who had missed the second qualifier, came back uh, with a vengeance in the third qualifier and took the crown again. He went 5-0 again with the same army Cap Wong Gladiators uh, at the Steamroller build and was able to take uh, take the crown there uh, up against Baron Scapius, who, um, funnily enough, is a uh, brother-in-law of mine and uh, had a great performance himself and was able to get an auto bid by placing second uh, and, and notably uh, beat me uh, at that event uh, to get himself to the second place uh, spot. So... Uh, congratulations to those two. They're auto bids uh, as well uh, for the third qualifier. And the fourth qualifier that just completed this last weekend, we have the uh, Cleon Grutz and the Advantage Grutz. Uh, Cleon took the 4-0 uh, title running heavies and uh, Advantage was able to run some uh, arrow Grutz and Swags uh, in a very tightly uh, contested final uh, round on this last weekend. So both uh, had a great showing and uh, auto bid qualified uh, for the event. Now I want to jump into the top 16 finishers and give shout outs to them for their performance this last season. Um, we've got uh, a, a bunch of them that obviously have performed well but never you know gotten the top two finishers. Um, something about this event that I really wanted to pr push and, and, 
and reward people for was involvement. Um, you know, someone who comes in and it participates in every qualifier could go two and two every single event, but still might make their way into the top 16. Participation is valued in my opinion. Um, so the rankings are based off of number of wins. The more you play and the more you win, the higher in the ranking you'll be. And so for a lot of these players, um, you know, they uh, consistently performed well by winning games and will find themselves in the final. Um, for those that uh, get an auto bid, uh, those auto bids obviously are rewarding them for their great performance in at least one of the qualifiers. But in the event that they did that one qualifier and then, you know, took off the rest of the year, uh, their seeding in the bracket, in the finals bracket, will be lower um, because the final seedings uh, are, are based off of wins. So someone who's participated throughout the year, gotten lots of wins and performed at a high level, will actually be ranked in the finals event higher than someone who got an auto bid, but only participated in the one event. So I just wanted to point that out as uh, those of you that have been thinking about or wanting to participate, or maybe you felt like it wasn't worth participating in an event where you missed half the year, or uh, weren't able to make it for two or three events, um, there's always a chance, right? You know, you can always qualify. It's incentivizing to know that you always have a chance for each qualifying event, even if you could only attend one. So um, hopefully that was how people felt. And, uh, and I'm excited, uh, you know, to, to keep this thing going. But let's go ahead and jump into the top 16. So the top 16, uh, at first or seated one, we have Bodacious Blood. Bodacious Blood obviously had a great performance, so he takes home the cake at the first seed. Uh, second is Dysol. Dysol did not auto-bid on any of the uh, qualifying events, but had consistent performance in each of the events uh, and gets the second seed. Third seed is Moon Knight. Moon Knight is one of our international uh, hero scapers, and same with him. Consistent performance throughout the event and, uh, and didn't get an auto-bid, but is seeded third. Fourth, Yours truly, Sir Heroescape. Uh, surprisingly, I was able to perform pretty well in each of the events and so found myself in, in seated fourth, which is exciting for me because I didn't get an auto bid either, but uh, but did perform well enough to, to make the top 16. Um, in fifth, we have Baron Scapius. Baron Scapius participated uh, in each event, didn't do as well in some events as others, but also got an auto bid. And so that auto bid slides him right in uh, as a as a fifth place seed, Gray Waves, another one of our international uh, hero scapers, slides into sixth. Uh, again, consistent performance, even though he didn't get a auto bid. Bouncing Wolves in seventh, again another one of our international hero scapers, at a high performance and placing himself in the middle of the pack there. Ogblaha, Ogblaha is an auto bid, eighth place seeding. He did get. Uh, that uh, that win one of the qualifiers. Number nine, Agent Ward, another one of our international hero scapers. Exciting to see the international community taking up a lot of these spots, um, but he's uh, good, consistent performance and ranked number nine. Cleon, Cleon takes the cake for the qualifier number four, uh, so was able to get an auto bid, but lower in the seedings. Rye Guy uh, takes the 11th spot. Uh, again, consistent performance, but wasn't able to get an auto bid. Chris Perkins, one of our 50-50 uh, 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 participants who's uh, very well known in the community for uh, his prowess in Heroescape and ScapeCon and, uh, and other events. Sheep, Sheep's coming in at number 13. And uh, again, well enough performing throughout the events to make it into the, the, the final here. Uh, Night of Light, Advantage, and Foodzing, number 14, 15, and 16 respectively, were all auto bids. Each of them participated, I believe, uh, just one, uh, maybe two events, I'd have to double check, um, but they all were auto bids into the event, so they uh, didn't have the highest overall performance throughout each of the qualifying events, but in the events that they did participate, they got one of the auto bids, and so they're slided into one of the lower rankings uh, for the final. Now for the exciting stuff, uh, prizes. For those of you that haven't remembered or uh, been in the know, this entire event has had over a thousand dollars of prizing, which has been bonkers. We've had some incredible sponsors, uh, and it's just been it's just been wonderful. So to start off, we're going to do a shout out to the sponsors, and then we'll talk about the specifics. So throughout this whole qualifying uh, events and the finals, we have four main sponsors who have just been wonderful. Good Home Games. Good Home Games has been the leading sponsor here for these this main event. 
uh, and has, has been incredible. eBay store uh, sells Heroescape, Warhammer, I think a few other games. Feel free to check them out. Renegade Games has agreed and will be prizing this event. Uh, exciting, exciting stuff. They weren't able to in the qualifiers, obviously, because we didn't know about them for uh, some time. But for the finals event, they will be prizing for uh, the first and second placers. I've been in contact with a member of the community that you, uh, many of you know, uh, Trexy3D is the company. Um, uh, Trex, may he rest in peace, his brother John uh, has a company that uh, does 3D printing primarily for the Heroescape community. There's other doodads and stuff on there, but he as well has agreed to prize the first and second placers for this event. Those are our, th our three main uh, sponsors. Throughout the qualifying events, we also had a sponsor from, uh, you know, Heroescaper Ryguy, who, uh, you know, he's got an Etsy store, Stuff by Hags. His Etsy store is uh, primarily, you know, lots of uh, cool swag, like t-shirts, mugs, uh, stickers, uh, you know, hats, wh whatever it is. It's really, really high quality stuff. Love the, love the stuff I've gotten from him. Um, and so he's been giving coupon cards throughout the qualifying events and has been a wonderful support for this event. So those four main sponsors, giving a big shout out for them. Uh, but uh, the three main sponsors will be just for this, uh, uh, this finals event. And again, Renegade, uh, supporting the Heroescape community. So get excited. So let's get into specifics. So for the first place prize for the finals, it's a long laundry list. $250 of in-store credit to Good Home Games on eBay. $50 of cash uh, given by myself. $50 of in-store credit to Renegade Game Studios online store. Again, you can hold on to that and use it for Heroescape. Uh, $25 of in-store credit to Trexy 3 d uh, his website. And a full custom dice set uh, just for the CCL champion. Uh, again, provided by myself. Um, so exciting stuff for the first place prize. There's lots to fight for. Second place prize, $100 to in-store credit for good home games on the eBay store. $25 to store credit for Renegade Game Studios. $15 to in-store credit to Trexy 3 ds uh, you know, website. And third place actually will also be prized. Third place will get a $50 store credit uh, to the Good Home Games eBay store. So we've got some exciting stuff going on here in the community, you guys. Uh, the, you know, first, second, third place uh, are going to be fighting for some some incredible prizing. Um, it's it's wonderful uh, to, to see support from the community uh, to not only participate in this event, but also to help sponsor it. Um, you know, just as a sneak peek, I'm, uh, I've been painting these dice here. Again, these are the CCL dice. So these are going to have the uh, normal Saharoscape dragon side and the Saharoscape symbol uh, on, the, on the defense side. But it's got the custom CCL uh, champion uh, symbol side. So uh, it's not coming through on the video as great as I thought. But, you know, I'll make sure to take pictures and post it later. But get excited about that. Now for the format. Many of you have been waiting around to hear, well, what's the format for the finals? Tripod Draft. Tripod Draft is going to consist of three 250-point armies and 10 figures. No duplicates, VC included, classic points. What that's going to consist of is a pool of six armies, the three from yours and the three from your opponents, coming together, doing a dice off, and the winner decides if they want to pick first or second, and you do a one 2 one pick. So out of the six possible armies, you're going to end up with two which means your army is going to be a 500 point 20 figure army at, at the max, right? Um, so that's how it's going to be. There's going to be two armies that don't get used, whether that's two of yours or one of your opponents or both of your opponents, we don't know. We'll find out, right? It's a pod draft. So uh, you're building three um, and uh, of the pool of six, four are going to be used in that game. So get excited as this is a unique format that I don't believe has been done before. Um, and should change up the meta a little bit and get people uh, very interested in, in army building. Now to the maps. Now maps have a big impact on the way that we play the game of Heroescape. Now the last uh, qualifying, the last you know year of qualifying events has seen 24 different maps. Some good, some bad, some you know in the middle. 
Um, and I think it's been very telling, uh, you know, as we've gone through the qualifying events, the, the great feedback we've got from the community uh, of those who have played in those events, you know, which maps are the favorite. I took another uh, small, quick poll um, from, from, uh, from a, a subset of those who have participated and kind of got an idea of what the best, most balanced or favorite maps from the event uh, throughout the year have been. It just so happens that six, which is the number I pick for our events, that six of those maps uh, had a, a, a above 50% respondent rate of, yes, we want to see this in the finals. And so I've selected those six maps as the ones that uh, we're going to be using, and I'm excited to announce those now. We're going to be using Aeon, Stygian Rift, Flaxen Shard, Morocco, Ingvild Pass, and No Aloha. Those are the six maps. And those six maps will have preset glyphs on them, uh, and, and they will be different from the glyphs uh, positions that were used previously in our uh, qualifying events. Um, so get excited. So those are the maps. Also announcing on the map front, uh, something that we will be up changing for the finals is that there will be a map ban for the semifinal and the final round. So semifinals and finals, you're gonna get to choose uh, essentially what map you're gonna play in the sense that you get to ban one, then ban two, then ban one. So we'll do the dice off, one player bans one, the next player bans two, the next player bans one, and you'll be left with two map possible maps. We're gonna just do a D20, one through 10 is one map, 11 through 20 is the other. I'll be the one managing those, uh, the, the, the management of the, of the bans and uh, the D20 roll for which maps, as I'll be generating the round at the time that we do these bans live, right? Because I have to be able to assign the map to the, to the round pairing and then publish the round uh, for the event to start. So we'll be doing those bands live, which will be kind of intriguing uh, and interesting to see how uh, players evaluate the map with the map pool or with the army pool um, that they uh, potentially play with. Now for some quick logistics. Um, it's very important that you understand this aspect of the event. I am requiring that you submit your armies early. Now, the .org, heroescape.org system doesn't have a perfect way to do this, but I found a workaround that I think is going to work. How we're going to do this is that the event obviously doesn't start till December 2nd, but I'm actually going to create the event, and the cre event's created now, as of November 18th. So what that's going to look like is in the event, it's going to say that the, that the event starts on 1118. In truth, we know that the event starts on December 2nd, but it's going to say it on heroescape.org as 1118. The way that that's going to work is that's, that's how I'm going to require you to submit your armies two weeks prior to the event starting. Now, what that's going to do for us is that's going to allow us to see public, uh, you know, matchups because we have a bracket that we're doing. And I'm going to talk about that in a second, as well as the public armies that are being used. And those, the, then those are locked in. Uh, and so that gives you two weeks of preparation. You're going to know the maps, you're going to know your opponents and your potential opponents, and you're going to know the armies that are being used in the pods. Um, so for two weeks, you're going to have that knowledge and the public is going to be able to set up brackets and you're going to be able to test and prepare as there's a lot on the line. And, uh, so it's exciting stuff. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, answer any questions around that. Please, in the comments or chatting on the Discord, let me know if you have any questions around that. But that's how we're going um, to operate to collect armies early um, and, uh, and get the event uh, generated where the public can see the, the armies early, uh, but the tournament itself won't start till December 2nd, obviously. Speaking of the bracket, uh, there is a, a bracket that will be um, presented and is being presented, obviously, here. Um, but uh, that's based off of the seating that we talked about here, you know, earlier. And just like March Madness or any other type of bracket system that you can bet on and, and participate in, we will be doing a prize for the best bracket. Um, it's going to be very simple, um, where you have to submit a bracket by 11, uh, you know, prior to the event starting. Um, and that's going to be emailing me at my email, heroescaperforlife at gmail.com. Um, and you can only submit it after the 11 or after the 18th. So 11, 18, I'll, I'll receive submissions for the brackets and, uh, cut off submissions prior to the event starting. The scoring system is going to be very simple. It's going to just be a one, two, four, eight system. So on round one, you're going to get one point for every one you get right. For round two, you're going to get two points. For round three, you're going to get four points. For round four, the championship, you're going to get eight points. 
Um, and so for every round, you can get a total of eight points, which means that over four rounds, you can max out at 32 points. So the top finisher of the bracket submission will get a custom set of CCL dice. And I think that's going to be an exciting way to keep the community involved and invested in the event um, because, heck, it's not hard to fill out a bracket and, uh, you know, be excited and listen in on and figure out who's winning and how that's going and uh, and then get a set of dice out of it. So um, hope you guys get excited about that and, uh, and, and pay attention to the armies and the players and the bracket as that uh, should make this a little bit more uh, interesting event um, for that reason. So... Here we are at the end of the time, uh, having covered everything, I think, <laughs> uh, that I, I need to uh, regarding the event. Um, for those of you that have questions or if there's anything that I missed, hopefully that will come out in the coming days. Um, live on the Discord is where I like to keep my information as up to date as possible. Um, and so please, 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 if you're not on the Discord, please get on the Discord. Uh, a lot of the announcements I post there, a lot of updates and things there. Um, but also on Heroescapers, I've got a thread there as well. Links are in the description for the Discord and for the uh, Heroescapers page, um, and as well as the Heroescape.org page, so you can stay invested in uh, what's occurring there. Um, other than that, that is the CCL in a nutshell. Also excited to, to hear your comments and thoughts about uh, Renegade already getting involved in our community events as I think that's pretty freaking awesome that uh, the game hasn't even been officially uh, presented with a product yet, and they're still willing to uh, prize this event. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you guys next time.